Hey, happy Thanksgiving, fam. I'm glad you joined us and tuned in. I'm Pastor Akil here at Emmanuel AME Church in Durham, North Carolina. I'm praying that your Thanksgiving day will be amazing, will be fantastic, will be terrific. I'm believing that this is going to be the greatest Thanksgiving of your life in the midst of a pandemic. The praise team is in the sanctuary. Uh, I'm here in my living room, but we're going to take a virtual trip to the church to see what the praise team is doing. And then I'm going to come right back. We're going to get into the word and then allow you to go and enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving. As many of you are even right now preparing Thanksgiving day, as many of you all got the oven on, got the stove on. I don't know what you're doing, where you are, but I know God is about to bless. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you on this Thanksgiving Day. Father, we thank you, God, that we're able to have a little bit of strength and joy. Father, in the midst of a different Thanksgiving for some of us, we pray right now for your blessing, for your peace. We pray right now for your grace and your mercy. Now, God, bless that man, woman, boy, and girl right now. Keep them, cover them, lead them, guide them, use them to your honor and to your glory, and allow them in the midst of a different type of Thanksgiving to feel your power and and your love. Allow them to know that you're still in control and that for some of us, God, you're carrying us through. God, we thank you for the food that we're going to receive on this day. God, help us to not overeat. God, help us to not eat, 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 eat until we can't eat no more. But God, give us a little bit of strength and give us a little bit of resistance to help us to know when to say no and to push back from the table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to go into the sanctuary our praise team is going to lift up a song of praise, thanksgiving, and celebration. And I'm going to come back and we're going to get into the word. God bless you and let's go into the sanctuary on the virtual trip.
Amen. Thank you, praise team. We thank God for your sacrifice, your dedication to leave your homes, to go to the church, to lift up songs of praise, thanksgiving, adoration unto God on this Thanksgiving day. Now y'all can go ahead and leave the sanctuary. Musicians, you can leave your instruments. Please get home safely and enjoy your Thanksgiving day. Amen. 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 It's Thanksgiving day morning. Uh, let's go straight to the word. This morning, God laid on my heart on Thanksgiving Day, family, uh, to come to you from the 100th division of Psalm, verse number four. Uh, we find the psalmist David, he writes these words, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks unto God and bless his holy name. That's it. The 100th division of Psalm, the very first, fourth verse. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Bless his holy name. Give God praise. That is what the psalmist David wrote in his 100th division of Psalm. And it's so befitting because what we find the psalmist David is doing is that he's encouraging those who may be down and out. He's not just encouraging, but he's also giving a command by saying, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Um, before we go a little bit further, uh, my main man, my uncle, you all know him, he had some words uh, that he wanted to share. Let's take a virtual trip out to Dallas, Fort Worth to hear from Unc to see what he has to say. Hello, this is special love to Pastor Akil and the Emmanuel AME Church family. This is your man, Kirk Franklin. Listen, I just wanted to stop by and say happy holidays. We know we've been going through a lot this year, but stay encouraged. This holiday season will be different than any other we've ever faced not so far, ever in our lifetimes, but many of you won't be able to be with the ones you love. And I know that's painful, but just know that the father loves you and be encouraged and know that you are not in this alone. And God is in control of the out of control. So God bless you, Emmanuel. God loves you. I love you. I'll see you soon. And praise God for, for Kirk for coming on out and just sharing some words and remarks to the Am Emmanuel AME Church family here on Thanksgiving Day. Shout out, salute Kirk, uh, is always there when you need him, an amazing brother. But what you heard, my brothers and sisters, is that Kirk reminded us that we are in a different time and that the pandemic has caused us uh, to be in an uncomfortable situation, especially for Thanksgiving that for the first time in history that many of us are unable to come together for family fellowship as we have normally done in the past due to the pandemic. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand the Psalmist David in the 100th division of Psalm, he writes these words, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to God and bless his name and praise his name. It's interesting to note that when we think about Thanksgiving, uh, that we think about a time for us to be reflective and appreciative for all that God has done, for all that God is doing, and for all that God has yet to do. That Thanksgiving is a time where we can come to reflect, it's a time where we can come to think about what God has done thus far, but it's a time for not just reflection, but it's also a time for anticipation. We understand throughout the culture of history that during this time of year uh, that there is a sense of uneasiness in a lot of persons. That because of the holiday season that a lot of persons are not their upbeat, joyous, happy self because the holiday season can tend, tend to be what is considered to be a depressed state 
of mentalness, a depressed state of where you are off of self-reflection because of something that may have occurred the last 11 months of the year. That is a time where many of us can get down and out. I myself, as I shared on Sunday, found myself in a place of upset frustration because for the first time I was unable to go and be with my family throughout uh, the holiday season. That it was a time where I was a little bit discouraged. It was a time where I lost motivation. It was a time that I did not want to really interact with persons because for the first time in my entire life, I was unable to go sit at my mama's table and enjoy Thanksgiving Day. For the first time, I was unable to see my family. For the first time, I'm unable uh, to see my sister, to see my, my niece, to see the fam, and to be able to touch and to hug, to laugh and to joke. The first time, I was unable to go to my godmother's house and kick it uh, with my big bros. For the first time, uh, I'm not allowed to do what has become my norm because of a pandemic that has caused us to shift and keep space. But in the midst of that, the psalmist David says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. When he says enter his gates with thanksgiving, we understand that this is a part of the call of worship, especially in the AME liturgy. But we understand that the psalmist David does not necessarily mean the gates of a church, does not necessarily mean the doors or the four walls of a building. But the psalmist David, when he says enter his gates with thanksgiving, is literally anything that God allows you access in a privileged too, that you ought to have a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of gratitude, a heart of appreciation. And here you see right behind me, I'm in my dining room and I'm chilling in the house and I may not have a smorgasbord spread out on the dining room table, but I'm still appreciative over the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I may have to eat tonight because I was unable to cook a turkey. You have to understand that when you have a heart of appreciation and you enter his gates with thanksgiving, given, you understand I am appreciative for everything that God has done, but more importantly, I give God praise for where God has brought me from. Uh, I forgot to tell you the sermon topic on this Thanksgiving day is it's all good. Just go ahead, type that in the section. It's all good. My brothers and sisters, what I want you to know on Thanksgiving day is it's all good. You may not be where you want to be. You may not be able to operate that you normally operate, but it's all good. Why? Because God is still in control. And when you understand it's all good, then you're able to tell yourself in the midst of a bad situation, I can see the good in the midst of the bad because I serve a God who is good all the time. And because God is good all the time, I may go through bad seasons in my life, but I still serve a good God. And the challenge with many of us on this Thanksgiving day is that we have to see the good in the midst of a bad. We have to understand that we can't put the spotlight and the microscope over one bad situation and ignore all of the good that God has done from January all the way up to November. On last week, I shared with you, my brothers and sisters, that I got discouraged. I was down and out because I could not do what it is that I wanted to do but God had to remind me that just because you can't do what you want to do and just because you are in this situation it's still all good because I am the God that's still in control and if you believe a kill that I am still in control then I want you to know in the midst of a bad situation it's all good am I talking to somebody this morning that it's all good good in your health. It's all good in your marriage. It's all good on your job. It's all good in school. It's all good in the midst of just seeing pure badness going around. Even in this nation, it's all good. In the election process, it's all good. And when you learn to tell yourself it's all good, then you can be like the psalmist David. I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving. In other words, I don't care what the situation looks like. I'm 
still going to give God praise because I'm appreciative that God gave me an inside advantage and allowed me to be in the gates when I could have been out the gates. Am I talking to somebody this morning that when you learn to enter his gates with thanksgiving, then you are just appreciative that I'm in the building, I'm in the room, I'm in the house, I'm wherever God wants me to go because God has given me access and it is a privilege to be where God wants me to be at and because I may not be fully there, I'm still on the road to success and it's all good. It does not mean you won't have bad times, but it simply means enter his gates with thanksgiving. Whatever God allows you to do, allows you to come into contact with, you got to understand it's all good and I got to be thankful even though it may not look good, it's still all good. There's somebody this morning, you may be laying in a dormitory bed, you may be in a hospital room on Thanksgiving and you're upset, frustrated, down, but I want you to understand it's all good. If your doctor gave you bad news and they got a negative disposition, I want you to understand who is the chief physician and the chief physician has the final say all good. When my bills are high and my money is low, it's all good. When my credit won't get it, it's all good because I know a God that still holds the world in the palm of his hand. I know a God who placed the sun in the sky and the moon in the sky. I'm talking about a God who separated the day from night. I'm talking about a God who placed the stars in the atmosphere. I'm talking about God who is so bad he is actually good let me say that again God is so bad that he's actually good what do you mean that God knows every speck of sand in Florida and God knows the hills in Georgia God knows how much the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean weigh before you ever even place footage or a boat in the ocean God knows it all I'm talking about God created the serious the numbers and the cumulus clouds in the sky. I'm talking about a God who knows the weight of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. I'm who knows how dry it is in the Sahara Desert. I'm talking about a God who can take the heat in Arizona and take the coldness in Detroit. God is so good that you don't even know how bad God is because it's all good. And what you saying looks bad. God is saying it's all good because I created you in my image. It's all good. And the only thing God wants you to do is enter his gates with thanksgiving. And look what it says go into his courts with praise. It's all good my brothers and sisters because we come from a people who understand how to take a bad situation and make it good. Y'all still not feeling me. Right here in the state of North Carolina we have 12 HBCUs the very first HBCU was established in 1865 in Raleigh and it was called Shaw University when seven gentlemen and sisters were able to put their nickels, pennies, and dimes together and get $140 and purchase a plot of land so that people coming up behind them would be afforded education even though they were not allowed to read and write. I want you to understand to the 12th and the last HBCU right here in Durham, North Carolina Central University that was founded in 1910 and is the first liberal arts college for African Americans in the state of North Carolina when they said that you were not allowed to operate a liberal arts school. It was some folks who said it's all good. We're going to step out on faith and do what God called us to do to the other 10 from Fayetteville State to Bob Scotia College, to Johnson C. Smith University, to St. Augustine University, to Bennett College, to Livingstone College, to the AME College, Cottrell College, to North Carolina A&T University, to Elizabeth City University, and to Winston-Salem State University. It's all good because we come from a people who understand in the midst of bad, we got to enter his gates with thanksgiving. In other words, we appreciate God, we magnify God. God, we exalt God, we give God praise, honor, and glory because we are 
thankful and we're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving, but we'll go into his courts with praise. In other words, when God says go, we have to go. And when you go where God calls you to go, you may not see what God is doing, but you understand God can see what you can't see. And you just got to give God praise, honor, and glory because God sees even when you can't see. And then God, the psalmist says, give thanks to God and praise his name. My brothers and sisters, how can I praise God in the midst of a situation that does not look good? Allow me to give you some examples. It was uh, in the 1950s, uh, right here in Durham, uh, I believe 1956, when there were some black brothers and sisters who went down to Royals Ice Cream Parlor and held the first state in, in the sit in in the state of North Carolina. Even it was a bad situation but they understood it's all good and they entered his gates with thanksgiving. They gave God praise, honor, and glory in the midst of a bad situation. There were several years later, the Greensboro Four at a Woolworth Department lunch counter that was for whites only. They sat there and refused to move in the midst of a bad situation. They said it's all good. Don't you know Dorothy Counts who desegregated Harding High School in 1957? in Charlotte, North Carolina was able to say it's all good after being spat on, after being abused and being picked on and teased and having the dolls and the hoses launched on her. She was able to say it's all good even though it looks bad. When there were five black men who were dragged off a bus in Chapel Hill called the Freedom Riders and they were forced into being incarcerated and work in a chain gang. One of the five by the name of Baynard Rustin wrote a letter and an article about his 20 days serving on a chain gang that faced the face of a nation and now in the state of North Carolina because of his letter about what he went through, the injustices and crookedness against him, they had to ban chain gangs in the state of North Carolina. Brother Baynard said, it's all good in the midst of a bad situation. Don't you know though that the NAACP took on the progressive police action in 1927 in Charlotte, North Carolina when they said you're going to act bad but it's all good because we serve a God that's bigger than your bad and it's all good. We got to give God thanksgiving. We got to give God praise, honor, and glory in the midst of a bad situation. It's all good. And my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to close out, I want you to understand that in the midst of a pandemic, it's all good in the midst of somebody trying to steal an election, it's all good. In the midst of social injustices and social unrest, it's all good. In the midst of racism rearing its head, it's all good. In the midst of classism and sexism and all the other isms, it's all good. In the face of a pandemic where COVID numbers are rising and other countries seem to have it under control, we can say it's all good because God is good and God is in control and when you know God is good and God is in control I may not be able to see the good in a bad situation all good. If you burn your turkey, it's all good. If your mac and cheese don't turn out right, it's all good. If you don't even have turnip greens, collard greens, kale greens, spinach, it's all good because the God that we serve is better than good. God, in the words of Campbell soup, is mm, mm, good. In other words, I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving. <laughs> praise. I'm going to give thanks and praise unto God because it's all good. Even when you don't feel like it, give God praise, honor, and glory. When your family members aren't in your living room, it's all good because God is good all the time and all the time. God is good and when people don't like you, it's all good because there was another man who said it's all good. It was a dark and dreary day.
time, the flowers begin to fade away. And it was a dark, a bad, a lonely time. But you understand, it's all good. In the midst of darkness, a sun can still rise. In the midst of darkness, the sun can still shine. And I want you to know on this Thanksgiving, you have a lot to be thankful for because it's all good. And because it's all good, my brothers and sisters, I want you to have an amazing Thanksgiving and to use this moment as a time of reflection, but to give God praise for what God is about to do because it's all good. Into his gates with thanksgiving, go into his course with praise, give thanks unto God and always bless his name. God's got you just like God's got me. And if there's one who does not know that God has you, you may not be saved. You may just need prayer. You may not have a church home. We invite you to be a part of Emmanuel AME Church here in Durham, North Carolina. All you got to do, even right now, is you can chat. You can send us an email at emmanuelamec. 2018 at gmail emmanuel amec 2018 if you want prayer if you want to be saved if you want to join the church we would love to welcome you to the body of christ called emmanuel we would love to be your church family members even virtually we praise god for you we thank god for you we pray that you have an amazing day as you prepare to celebrate on this Thanksgiving, if God has laid it on your heart to sow a seed to the ministry here at Emmanuel AME Church, we have four ways you can sow a seed. You can go to our website, www.emmanuelamec.com, and you can give through that. You can write a letter, uh, write a check, put it in the mail, Emmanuel AME Church. 2018 Riddle Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. You can give through the GiveLify app, Emmanuel AME Durham, or you can give through Cash App at dollar sign E-A-M-E-C 2018. Those are the four ways to give if you want to be a blessing. We thank and praise God. I'm going to share with you this Sunday all that God has done throughout this week and how we were able through your faithful tithes and giving of the members of Emmanuel AME Church and all of our virtual worshipers you all exceeded our expectation and we were able to feed more than 140 families god blessed us tremendously you'll see pictures about that check our social media page on facebook and instagram to see how god has been moving i'm pastor kill at emmanuel ame church i love you but remember jesus loves you even more i'll see you sunday morning have an amazing thanksgiving and remember it's all good. Take care and God bless. Peace. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto